Okay, so has everyone got everyone here? We've got an so we're going to go through. I've got the wrong mural up. Just bear with me here two seconds. I was working on one and I've got two versions of the same thing. So you get to see how messy my public meetings folder is. We want the codes we use, not the bus operators codes we use. And we'll probably have me. All the people who got the link from here and wondered why it wasn't the same as the one you were sent in the meeting uh you, you are spotting that i have two murals that were very closely named and i've forgotten and this one isn't locked either okay i'm just gonna have a day i thought i was planned and everything here is here is today's link everyone who's had the link before please ignore it uh in the from the chat because that is the link for thursday that this is today's one just and just bear with me here two minutes. I'm just going to quickly lock everything so I don't drag and drop stuff around when I'm trying to do things. Because uh, it's now worse. Uh, how we use the codes. Lock. Then I want to lock Bevel and Beryl. Beverly and Beryl. You're never gonna. You're never gonna forget Beverly and Beryl and Beryl's journey. By the time we're done with this this year, you're all going to know you're all going to know them so so closely, and you hopefully you're still going to like them. And I'll just lock that. Right, fantastic. Let me run back to the start, and we will get underway. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to go through. We're going to do our usual icebreaker, saying hi to everybody on the call, or up to 20 people on the call, um, and then we're going to go through. Just ensure that everyone knows how to get to previous meetings and sign up for the newsletter and things like that if you want to get it. Uh, we're going to run through a little bit previously on NAPTAN, and then for the bulk of it, we're going to focus on the codes we use. So we're going to talk about what is a bus stop and what codes we use to identify a bus stop and how those are represented in the data set, in the NAPTAN data set. And I want to understand how they're created and what some of your thoughts are on them. When we use the different codes, we're going to go through the Beryl Beverly journey a little bit and have a look at that data stream and when the different codes are used um, because it feels like there's some switching between codes and then talking about because last time we talked about the managed removal service and taking some of these codes and firing them into the sun uh, in a black box we want to understand if there's any that we want to put in a recycle bin so you can pull out and reuse them um, or do we need to destroy them all so just trying to understand what people's thoughts are so that we do something that works for everybody so starting from the top, I am going to do a, if I click on this, I get exactly what I wanted. Excellent. Um, we're going to do an icebreaker. It's going to be the usual name, pronoun, where you're from, uh, bus company, local authority, software provider, or something else. And then the, the, the icebreaker question for today is, thank you, driver. Do you say it? Do you not say it? And when do you say it? So to break with tradition and because Tim River always ends up being left off because he's at the bottom, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up the list, up the list today. But I'm going to do myself first. So, hey, everybody, I'm Dr. J. I use they as pronoun. Uh, I am from DFT. I am a service designer, business analyst, hand wavy type. Um, do I say thank you, driver? Actually, I don't. Occasionally when I'm up north, I'm almost guilted into it because the last six people who've hopped off the bus have said it. So I feel I need to say it. But it's never feels like a natural thing. And I don't know whether that's because in New Zealand you tended not to say it. Um, or maybe I, I have just grown up without any manners. Um, the the jury is out on that one. Tim, I'm going to throw it to you to do your icebreaker. <laughs> yeah, thank you, uh, Tim Rivett. Um, I am um, uh, none of the above. Um, I am from Artig. Um, I'm he, him. Um, I'm sort of a user group. Um, representative um, and um, I say thank you driver most of the time but sometimes it's cheers bud <laughs> even better uh, James Thompson you're the next one up hi there I'm James Thompson from uh, Westmoreland and Furnace Council I use he him and uh, yes I do I do say thank you driver but I'm also from up north so that might explain it 
<laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, Roger Court, you're the next one up. Hi, I'm Roger Court. I'm from Kent County Council. Um, he, him, my pronouns. Who says thank you, driver? All right thinking individuals when leaving the bus, I think. <laughs> you obviously haven't been in London recently. Um, Richard, you're the next one up. Richard Hall. Hello. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can, Richard. Yes, good. Uh, yeah, my name's Richard Hall. I work for Ito World. Um, pronoun he. Um, uh, I previously worked for Northumberland County Council, where I was responsible for NAPTAN, creating and maintaining NAPTAN records. And uh, yes, I do say thank you to the driver when I'm getting off a bus. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, Nat, you're the next one up. Hi, everyone. My name is Natalie Gledel. Um, my preferred pronouns are she and her. I'm a product manager at Eater World. And um, I always thank the driver, um, but I don't know who who we're going to thank when we have these driverless buses. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, AI. <laughs> yeah, thank you, AI. <laughs> That's an interesting question. Uh, Leon, you're the next one up. Hi, everyone. Leon Byford, Product Manager at Transport for London. Um, I do say thanks, typically when I'm actually getting on the bus, just to sort of save the awkwardness of saying thanks when I'm trying to get off and uh, there's quite a few people in the way, but uh, that's just me. Uh, and Le Leon, sorry, I didn't catch your pronouns in there. Um, whatever you like. Okay, fantastic. I will challenge accepted. Uh, Lee Dandy, you're the next one up. Hello, I'm Lee Dandy. I'm a transport officer from Essex County Council. Um, I, being from Essex, I just say cheers, mate, when I get off the bus. And did I get your pronouns, Lee? I didn't. Oh, I sorry. I'm a, I'm a him or a he, but again, I'm, I don't mind what you call me, really. <laughs> again, challenge accepted. Uh, this is going to be a fun day for Neo pronouns. Iona, you're the next one up. Hi, I'm Iona. I work for Strathclyde Partnership for Transport, which is essentially the transport authority for Greater Glasgow area. Um, I prefer she, her pronouns. And when I do get on the bus, I think I think I usually thank the driver, unless he's particularly rude. <laughs> I love that all bus drivers are, 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 are he up in Glasgow. Uh, well, yeah, most, uh, to be fair, I don't get the bus all that often, but when I have been recently, yeah, they're all male. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ian, Jacques, you're the next person up. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Ian Jakes. I'm from Leicestershire County Council. Um, third pronoun, he, him. And uh, I do always say thanks or maybe cheers, mate, to the bus drivers I get off. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Mark Hodgkiss, you're the next one up. Mark Hodgkiss, um, he, him, uh, Westmoreland Furnace Council, was Cumbria County Council until beginning of April. Um, yes, I always thank uh, bus drivers, uh, not because I'm up from up north, because I originally come from South Wales and have lived in Plymouth. So just I think it's it's nice and polite and makes everyone friendly and happy. Thank you so much. Uh, Hannah, you're the next one up. Um, hi everyone, I'm Hannah. I am the uh, one of the product owners on Naptan and um, I do say thank you driver but I think it's a habit because I grew up in the Netherlands and it was just the thing whenever you get off the bus uh, to say it to drivers so yeah I think that's where it comes from. Did we get your pronoun Hannah? She her. Fantastic, um, I'm going to drop backwards and grab Haraj who's just joined us. Hello, sorry for being late. I was just wrapped up in another meeting. I'm assuming this is the icebreakers. Uh, Absolutely. So my name is Haraj Man, pronoun he, him. Uh, where from? DFT, Naptown, one of the Naptown product owners. Uh, thank you, driver, who says it. I've not got the context. Is this, do I do say, you say thank, thank you to thank the you driver? Drive. Yes, you I say, say thank, thank you, you drive to the that. driver. Because, well, I say thank you because it's just respectful that someone's took the time to take you somewhere. So you got to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Gillian, you're the next one up. Hi, Gillian Watson, Faith Council. She, her, 
Um, I always say thank you, driver. Um, not because I'm married to a bus driver, but I've always said it since I was small. So. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Chris Montashaw, you're the next one up. Hi, Chris Montashaw, East Riding Council. He, him, uh, coming from up north, yes, I do say thank you to the bus driver. And the train conductor I, as well sometimes. I am feeling like I have grown up the rudest of rude people. I will give some examples. I, I will give context maybe in a moment. Um, I'm so, uh, Callum, you're the next one up. Hey, uh, Callum McLeod, so Senior Product Manager in the digital team at Transport for London. Um, and uh, he, him. And yeah, uh, I'm formerly from Auckland Transport. I moved over last year. And thank you, drivers, what we all say back there. So uh, keep, <laughs> I'm keep just, that uh, habit even here in London. <laughs> I'm a Jaffa, and I think I, I, I lost that habit after about a year or so in London because Londoners on the buses do not speak. And and I, yeah. I had that drilled into me by several people. Um, <laughs> I haven't lost it yet. I'm, from, I'm, 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 a, I'm a mainlander, so uh, I'm from the, ah. from the better island. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I'm a South Aucklander born and bred uh, from Papakura. Ah, uh, <laughs> I imported myself there. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, thank you, Callum. Uh, ben, you're the next one up, and then I'm going to make Andy the last person that I go to. So Ben Stanley. He's actually my colleague. He's just popped out of the office for five oh, seconds. So okay, then not going to reply. <laughs> Alexandra, you can you can take a, you can take this spot if you oh, would like. No, I should have kept quiet. Um, yeah. So Alex Leven, um, she her, um, I'm a product specialist at Basemap, and I do say thanks, but then again, I'm also a typical Brit. I apologise for absolutely everything, even when I've done nothing wrong. Um, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you for that. And Andy Hole, you'll be the last one that we go to because otherwise we will be here for way too long. Hi, I'm Andy Hole. I am a he, him. Uh, I work for National Public Transport Information, which is a local authority owned company. Um, I always thank the driver unless he's given me a reason not to, as in shaking us around too much or whatever. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for that. Um, it's a fascinating insight to how much London has made me uh, somebody who doesn't speak on buses and maybe I should start saying thank you driver and just watch the the chaos ensue around me. So very quickly for those who didn't see it earlier, the plan for today, we're just going to do a tiny bit of housekeeping to make sure that you've all got all the links and everything that you need and then um, we're going to go through a bit of previously on just to make sure that we've got all of the outcomes and are up to date with what's going on. Then the focus of today is on the codes that we use. This is the ACTO code, the NAPTAN code, the plate code, the clear down code, and anything else we can find that's a code that we use to describe a bus stop. Um, I don't want to talk about indicators. I just want to talk about the codes to identify a bus stop and how we use them, how we generate them, how they fit into our different services so that we understand what they're used for and don't try and do something that would break everything. And then we're going to get some feedback. Um, and in going through the codes, we're going to look at what is a bus stop, how we use the codes, which codes we use when, and if we recycle any of them, do we reuse them? Do we throw them away? Do we fire them into the sun? So very quickly, some some housekeeping. We've got a YouTube channel. You're all featured on the YouTube channel. Um, you can watch it on high speed. I highly recommend that. Um, you can also follow us on Eventbrite. And you can also now we've got a little link of signing up for the newsletter. So we send out an occasional newsletter, I think it's about once a month, which has all little bits of information about the public meetings, some about some of the testing that we're doing. So we might do a call out for people to come and do some testers. I know that I did a call out in the, in the last newsletter to say, hey, Hey, get us on your meetings because um, we want to make more connections with everybody. So if you have like um, uh, regional meetings around your travel line, regional meetings around how you organise things together around your transport, invite me, Haraj and Hannah. We'll come along, we'll sit quietly, we'll talk about NAPTAN, whatever you'd like us to do. But we just really want to connect out as much as we can with everybody. Um, so previously on NAPTAN. 
um, archive service or manage removal. We went through that in the last couple of meetings. We're currently working on this as a development team. So we've got the service design and your feedback. We're going to be doing some user research and some proof of concepts for the technical solutions. And our goal is to have a simple core service available by the end of August. Now, how that looks, whether you can all use it, whether it's only being used by one or two people, we we don't quite know because there's quite a bit of work to do, but that's our goal is to have that simple service available and then we'll start building on it very much as we did with the way that we, we replatformed NAPTAN. We, we did that core bit and then built on it. Um, street versus schema, we're still having some, some, some questions around how the street and schema match and that is some of what we're going to get onto in some later meetings around uh, DRT, Flex and HA. Um, demand responsive transport, um, flexible stops and hail and rides and how how we put them in, how we talk about them. Just looking at some of those things where trying to represent what's on the street is kind of a bit tricky in the schema and how do we do that? Um, precisely and accurately, this is about locating things. Um, everyone gives us Eastings and all things which at the correct precision, which is fantastic. We need to figure out for some people, they need these as latitude and longitude, and we are trying to figure out the, and think about and uncover working with Ordnance Survey the best way of doing this. We know that they have a page on how to do this. We're hoping that they have a nice little simple API tool. They've, I have read through the document that explains the math of why this is not simple. It is never going to be simple. There will be something that always goes slightly off, and we might need to give you the ability to tweak a stop so that the latitude longitude stop and the eastings northing stop are in the same place and how do we measure that which map do we use to make sure that they're sitting in the same place um, these are all really big questions that we need to sort out uh, we did some work on coaches we now understand coaches Five that minutes they're not later. just a bus even though stagecoach runs buses and megabus runs coaches and my life is confused um, a coach is a specific type of vehicle that can go on a motorway and not be speed limited. They have to, and a coach cannot have a baby in a pram. The baby has to be in a travel seat and things like this. Um, and there is some distances and about how the driver's time is measured. Um, and that's another one of the things that we need to think about and take into account when we look at how we do things. The other thing that you all should be aware of, the 900, so they were coached, they were stops that started with 900. We've withdrawn them from that 10. We're going to put them through the full managed removal service. You can spot where I'm going to get my test stops from. We're going to put them full through the full managed removal service. Um, but these were completely withdrawn. So these were the national coach stops. Nobody was using them. They hadn't been updated for years. And we effectively found out nobody wanted them. If you do want them and you do need them, just let us know we've got the data. We can put it back in until we put them through managed removal and then we're, we're going to have to figure that one out. But just let us know if you still need them. And then um, we've got some some questions about, we presented a roadmap um, and we've got some questions about um, how we do that. So we're still in discussions and having a think. Are there any questions about previously about before I fire on into what we're here today to really focus on? No, fantastic. So the codes we use. I know everyone's going to go, oh, we're back at what is a bus stop, but I just wanted to run through and just ensure that we're all thinking of the same thing. Now, I know there's different bus stops and there are bus stops that don't quite meet this, for example, your Highland rides, etc. But let's just think of a bus stop as a bus stop is where the bus stops. And it's a little one by one metre square that is centred on where the passenger needs to stand to get on the bus, which is usually right beside the flag. So whether Tim or I agree on whether it's the passenger or the flag that wins, they're usually within a metre of each other, so it's never going to matter. Um, it's represented as an Eastings Northings, and we'll translate it into latitude, longitude and sort that out. And this is the other thing that I want you to think about. Every bus stop is represented in the data set and in the world with various codes. So when I go to a bus stop, I can see a bus stop and it's because um, I live in London. It's got a little red thing with a number on the top or it tells me what bus stop it is. And I know that if I go and have a look in the data set, it has an ACTO code, which is three digits and then some other digits, some other alphanumerics. And then it's also got a NAPTAN code, 
which is uh, something that I could type in on a phone, a T9 code, and it's another unique identifier. And then I also know that on a lot of on a lot of bus stops, there's a QR code, and I want to understand kind of how those codes interlink and are put together. And I also know within the NAPTAN data set, there's a plate code and a clear-down code. So there appears to be like four, at least four, possibly five unique identifiers for each stop. One, do we need five? Two, what does each of them do? What am I not quite understanding about these? And um, just to keep on a Eurovision theme, there will be null, point, null points, zero points for telling me to go read the uh, schema because I have read three versions of it. Still can't make sense of how we, how some of these codes are generated when I look at the codes. I can't quite see it and I'm just wanting to make sure that I haven't misunderstood something. So, I would like to understand your ACTO codes. How do you create your ACTO codes? How do you, I know that we all get a prefix. So like London is 490. Anyone in Wales starts with five. Anyone in Scotland starts with six. Uh, the centrally managed stops start with a nine. We know that all around the country. But how do you take that, that three digit prefix and actually generate your ACTO codes? And then how do you use them? Now I'm I'll see I'll see how you go. I'm gonna try you on doing ACTO codes and NAPTAN SMS codes together. So how do you create your NAPTAN SMS codes? Now I know some people call them NAPTAN codes, some people call them SMS codes. I've that's why it's got that weird dual name at the moment. So I'd like you to stop and think about how you create it. So when you need to create a new stop, how do you give it an ACTO code and how do you line them up and then how do you go and create a NAPTAN code for it as well and then how do you use that where do you think it's used and how is it used in your systems does this do these kind of questions make sense to everyone and that you, it may feel very much like you're explaining what a bus stop is to me but I think from looking at the data set there's quite a few different variations on how we do this and I just want to understand everyone's different ways of doing it so I'm going to shut up. I'm going to give you five minutes and we'll see how you go with putting that in. Are there any questions before we launch into this? I can see visiting go is getting underway already before I've even set the timer. So I'm assuming there are no questions and you're all just rearing to go. Does everyone have access to the mural, by the way? If anyone doesn't have access, Note these down on a piece of paper and when we get through to reading everything out, call them out and if they're not already there, we'll we'll add them to them, add them to it. So I am going to set a timer for five minutes. And if you've been watching the videos on on the um, on the YouTube channel about here, it's going to cut and go five minutes later and then you, it's going to um, have a little SpongeBob and five minutes will have magically jumped through. So I'm going to give you five minutes. I'm going to turn off my mic and my camera and we shall see how this goes. Five minutes later. I'm loving that people are jumping on to the next one of our codes. So we, I'm going to do another five minutes um, in a few minutes on QR codes and the other codes. So um, you don't need to fill that out now. It's great that you're jumping ahead. Um, I just wanted to let you use know that I was wanting just to focus on NAPTAN and the ACTO codes in the first tranche of this. But if you want to get ahead, go for it. Five minutes later. Um, one of the things I might ask people, and I'm not, I'll, I'll do it um, during the next break, I think, uh, or during the next time that uh, I've got you doing some writing. Um, if you've got any numbers of how many people still use your SMS service, um, because there's some restrictions on the NAPTAN code, which only makes sense if you're using like a Nokia 3310 or that old style T9 interface. And I just wanted to get a sense from you how many people are still using those style interfaces. Um, so, but we've got about a minute left now. So take your, take your time to finish off 
um, ACTO codes and um, NAPTAN SMS codes. And then what I'll do is I'll read through everything on the screen um, so you can and, and get any feedback, have any discussion, and then we'll move on to the next part of, of which codes. Okay, we've got like 10 seconds left. So when the little bing bong start comes up, I'm just going to go through and read off. <laughs> Some of you have written me almost an essay. Um, so I'll go through and read these all through. And if there's any questions or any discussions, throw your hand up. I will hopefully spot it. Otherwise, we'll, um, uh, Hannah or Haraj will call out for me that hands have gone up. So how do we create an ACTO code? Code begins with three digits indicating the LA controlling the stop. Fourth digit is zero to indicate a stop as opposed to G for a stop group. And the next eight simply have to be unique. We simply maintain a list in Excel. I love that we use Excel to manage our, our data set and something else. Good to know. In Cumbria, the code was made up of 0900, oh, 0900 for Cumbria, two digits for the district, two digits for the Paris parish and then four digits for the sequential number created on an access database the person who designed it left many years ago that seems to be a lot at, at least it's not hosted on an amiga in strathclyde each council area has their own prefix eg 6090 equals glasgow the following digits are selected manually but tend to follow a numerical order London is 4900 plus a five digit number derived from the internal id plus stop letter and direction Thurrock, uh, I'll come back to Thurrock. If you could click off that, that'll make it a bit easier to read. Um, ACTO codes are created centrally in Wales by Travel Line Wales. No idea who is responsible for our English services. We can create fake ones in Omnimap to get it through Trans Exchange and Emergency, although that usually comes back to mind you. Um, in Thurrock, we keep a record of the last code used, increment for each new stop. For SMS codes, do not use the same letter twice in a row. Um, just coming up here, or oh, somebody's typing in that, so I'll just read this one here first. Many areas in my control prefer to manually add letters to the ACTO code to break up the numbers, but if they do not, Diva automatically creates the next number by incrementing the last ACTO code by one. ACTO codes are created and maintained by LAs. Each uses its own way of doing this. In Northumberland, we created codes based on OS grid reference, e.g. 3110. 3100T899473. Others use a simpler sequence and time to wear a maximum of 12 characters, I believe. Is there any other thoughts on act on how we create ACTO codes? Is there anyone who's like shocked by the differences in the way that we create ACTO codes? Are there any surprises for anyone about ACTO codes? No, excellent. As long as they're unique, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't, uh, unless you're trying to do data quality and discovering um, that just that they're unique may not be enough sometimes um, to 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 help us try and understand and ensure that they're all put together. But it, it's it's good to know that all the different ways that people have. I'm I'm curious about the Strathclyde. No, the the in Cumbria, the access database, is the, is the access database still around? Is that a little tool that is just having to sit there and be used on a machine that's now probably decomposing? No, no it's, it is it is still there and we are still, can, it's, we can just still use it on our ordinary uh, laptops and network system. But the- Good to know. The program itself though was written, I mean, I think, in fact, the, the guy who did it may have only been in to, to write the program and then left again. So we can't make any changes to it. OK, and that is what drives out your district parish and four digits. Yeah. Right. That's uh, it's interesting. And some authorities use part of the ACTO code to indicate the locality. Yeah. And that's a that's an interesting question. If we've got the data else are in the database, why do we put it in the ACTO code? This is all some of the complications that I'm just trying to understand. So I may come and ask you more questions, but not right now. 
um, how we use these. ACTO codes for, uh, form the primary key in the NAPTAN database in a very real sense. The ACTO code is the stop. Everything, uh, everything else about the stop can change, but the ACTO code remains and, until we go and fire it into the sun as part of Manage Removed. In Cumbria, used for everything, including electronic bus registrations, travel line and BODs. Used to ensure that it, that it is means we are using the correct stop, so we use it for trans exchange, bus stop, etc. NAPTAN records include tram, tree, etc. stops as well as buses. Uh, also records for interchange and rail stations to help people find their way. Yes, yes, totally aware. I'm just focusing on bus stops right now because um, trying to get a little bit some less complex when we think about this might help us understand it a little bit more. So we're just focusing on bus stops right now because we know that some of those other stops don't have some of the other codes. So trying to understand how these codes are put together. The ACTO code is the primary key for the stop point. London used as a primary ID for the website and our app as well as open data. Fantastic. Um, so moving on to NAPTAN SMS codes. Are there any questions about how ACTO codes are used, by the way? No, cool. Um, similar to an ACTO code, SMS codes start with three characters and in indicating the LA. The next five must be unique sequence. Repeating letters are not permitted. Maintained using Excel. London is a five digit number. In Cumbria, now produced off a list on an Excel spreadsheet. Excel is, is doing a lot. Of, of work here. SMS codes show on our flags. List previously supplied by Landmark will not allow you to use a code that has previously been reused. Is Landmark a piece of software, by the way? Um, I'm just trying to understand here. Just help me understand previously supplied by Landmark. I just want to understand what Landmark is. Drop it in the chat or um, just let me know what landmark is and what that means. I'm thinking it's either a consultancy or some type of software, but I just want to make sure that I'm thinking of the right thing. Landmark used to have a contract with the DFT for managing the central NAPTAN database. Of course they did. I knew that I'd seen the name somewhere. Thank you, Tim. Um, so. <laughs> OK, so they supplied a list and we can't reuse anything. OK, cool. I was just making sure that I was thinking of the right landmark. Um, first three characters of NAPTAN code indicate the LA NLD for Northumberland to it for, for Tyne and Ware. I have a system which generates the SMS codes for any of my areas that want more and I allocate them on request in blocks of 100. Andy, is that is that your... Do you have a, a magic system floating around? Yes. I do. <laughs> actually, it was a database I built myself that done it. We, had, we can get it done in Diva, but the cost of the development isn't worth it. So we maintain. So I send them out in Excel spreadsheets to my data, to my stop owners. Sounds, sounds, good, sounds good. And I might ask you a little bit uh, when we come to chatting more on this um, about how you generate those. But I'm not trying to get into the depths. I'm just trying to understand how we use them. So how we use NAPTAN SMS codes, because we've got two codes now that are unique. So we've got an ACTO code, which is up to 12 digits, and we've got a shorter, generally containing letters and numbers, um, NAPTAN code. So it's used in the next buses system, which is the one from Travel Line. And just let me know whether that's, I'm thinking of the right next buses. We also put them on flags to help identify the stop. I was told that this was being phased yes, out, so we stopped. Buses. Ah, so we stopped using yes, them. Yes, Travel Line next buses system, sorry. Oh, cool, cool, no problems. Thank you, Andy. I was told that this was being phased out, so we stopped using them. We previously used them for Travel Line text only. Okay. Um, I uh, phasing out is an interesting question for for them because I do want to understand how they're used and why we have two unique identifiers, but that's a whole thing. In Cumbria, we stopped producing them for 10 years. Only restarted as we thought they were needed for BODs, which they weren't, but we still create them. As far as I know, they're not used by anyone or use the NAPTAN code. London, really only used for SMS. Our SMS codes are used 
in our departure board system to get live departure boards that can be used on a mobile device or smart TV or on street signs. Aha, Strathclyde, we have to give new stops an SMS code, but we don't use them internally. Addo codes is most important on identifier. Tend to only be used when looking up stops using Google Maps. Yes, Google Maps does use your Naptan code. We don't display these on flags, so don't think they're used by the public, unless you happen to be using Google Maps. Um, so, are there any questions about Naptan and SMS codes? Anything surprising people there? Can I ask a question? Just call out, how many people knew that Google Maps uses your Naptan code and not your Acto code for dis for displaying a stop? Yep, I knew that. Of course you did. We, uh, to, to confuse things, we actually call the Acto code the Naptan code in our internal system. Um, it is the Atco code that we call the Naptan code, even though officially the, the Naptan code is the SMS code. I know because our, our internal system, I don't know if you remember, Jay, but I've spoke to you, it was very old and similar to what one of the other guys mentioned. It was developed, people who developed it left some time ago and it's not really able to, it, it does its job quite well, but you can't really change fields because it's sort of, dormant almost um so it is a bit confusing this sms naptan because to me a naptan is the 6090 number like i said but that to everyone else is an actual code i'm truly speechless I, I will take a moment to recover and in the meantime alex i just wanted to back up what was iona was saying then i completely agree with her i always assumed the naptan was the was the long number thing and the ATCO code was the was was basically the travel line text code. So I back you at 100 percent there. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and I continue to be shooketh. Andy, are you gonna unshooketh me or are you going to continue driving me down this hole of crying? Uh, no. I am gonna make you cry even further. Up until very recently we also used to refer to the ATCO code as the Naptan code. Because at first, for many, many years, it was the only code in the system. You know, it's only been within the last few years that the SMS code has been referred to as the Naptan code and the ATCO code, the ATCO code. So, yeah, I, I concur with all the others. Um, Roger, feel free to continue to blow my mind. Well, this this might um, just be um, a bit of folklore, but um, when I first started working with Naptan, um, I was told that in the earlier versions, um, the what we now call the ATCO code was referred to as the uh, the Naptan code, and the SMS code was the SMS code. But then, when the ATCO code became the ATCO code, they wanted to call something the Naptan code, so the SMS code got called the Naptan code. Um, it, it's a bit of a confusing situation, uh, which is why we use ATCO and SMS instead of ever referring to anything as the Naptan code. The the one thing that actually troubles me a bit about Google using the SMS code as the identifier is that it's possible to create a stop without an SMS code. It isn't possible to create a stop without an ATCO code. That's exactly part of why I raised it because it is one of those things uh, I'm st and Ito world I've got a connection that I only just got a day ago so I need to set up a meeting between the Ito world people and a Google person to sit down and talk about some of this stuff um, and also TFL just so that you're aware one of the questions because they're displaying a whole pile of stops as being accessible with a little wheelchair sign, even though those stops are canonically not accessible because they're hail and ride stops on a very narrow lane. So um, I'm going to have a discussion of how they're grabbing that data and talking. So it'd be lovely to connect up with yous either before or after that, just to understand your understanding. Um, Mark, you've got your hand up. In this wonderful confusion of, there are two unique identifiers which seem to have swapped names. Yeah, I'm going. To, I'm going to join the list because you know we until recently we I certainly thought that the uh, the you know but the one was an Aptan code the the one we start so 900 and then the one which starts CUM was just a, a text code 
I didn't realise until very, very recently. And I'm a bit confused by the invention of Google because you say, we, for 10 years we didn't put any, we, and no, no new stops had the, uh, the NAPTAN code, C-U-M code added. And yeah, I'm sure they were on, on Google Maps. So I'm a bit yeah. about that um, suggestion that they, they only appear no. on Google Maps and it's got the C-U-M because I, I don't think that's true. No, they seem to, it seems to be what they're using to label a stop right. um, rather than the ACTO code. Sorry, I didn't, m m I misled you ever so slightly there. Um, and I'm not going to get into it today because it gets, it's, I want to focus on sorting out this, well, understanding the code landscape. And Callum, I also want to talk about, I want to chat to you if you were doing transport in New Zealand about how you put Māori into Maori language into stops because that's a question that I want to take you I, I, I want to have a chat with but this is just like um, 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 something that we need to explore and thank you right <clears throat> having just changed and shooketh my world and had me now have to sit down and will possibly need to go and have a quiet quiet moment before I do anything and <laughs> before I try to think of the next things. I want to have a look at QR codes and the other codes that we use. I'm going to have um, a few minutes. I'm going to put a few, I'm going to put a couple of questions up, but I want to give you five minutes for those who didn't get across to it, just to fill out how you generate your QR codes if you use them. If you don't use them or if you use a website code, um, how, what you, so if you a lot of QR codes will put you to a website, um, how you do that, what you use to run your website code, and if you use the plate code or the clear down code. Now, I'm also aware um, the clear down code technology disappeared a while ago, but um, I'm really, really keen to understand if anyone is still using that field, if you are using it, what you might be using it for. Um, and plate codes, I just kind of want to understand how you might use them. Um, there are some ideas that I've heard in the past about how we use them, and I just kind of want to drive in and really, really understand. So I'm going to set a timer for five minutes, and I will go off and try and regain some thing that appears like normality in my brain, just having had NAPTAN and ACTO codes break it. Five minutes later. Arrows, uh, arrows are always fun. Uh, right. Uh, and also, I'm I'm realizing. Uh, that um, as somebody who spends their life looking at the XML data, um, or the CSV file, if I if I absolutely have to, um, I probably have more of a close relationship to what the fields are called than anyone who's using, who's building the data set via a system. So I, this is part of just helping me understand how the data ends up in the data set and how you're thinking about it. Oh yes, uh, 2005, uh, a couple of years ago. Um, always good to know that 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 my sense of time is everyone else's sense of time. In fact, NAPTAN version 2 arrived six months before I arrived in the UK. So, yes. Uh, so let's go through the QR codes. Now, I understand the QR codes are shown on a bus stop. And the ones that I've played with when I've been outside of London, because I know London don't got many, um, I've shown the QR code to my phone and I've clicked on the QR code, the website that comes up and it's given me like real time information or something. So obviously the QR code is uniquely identifying the bus stop. And I'm just trying to understand how we do it. In London, it's a UR, it's a URL based on GUI generated purely for for QR codes. So in London, you're generating a brand new, um, a brand new unique identifier. Um, I didn't know they existed, but I do now. Not sure how to create uh, QR codes are a, are, are a whole new th uh, and an interesting um, way of getting information to people. In Cumbria, just a link to a website, so the code is based on the link produced in PDF editor. So in Cumbria. 
do you know whether you're using the acto whether you're using the 12 digit number or the shorter number to or another number to uniquely identify that bus stop can you the, help me it, the, well, so the, the links actually go to um stage church's website but if you look at the last 16 so last 12 digits on the um website address it's the uh, 0900 so what is the at Coco. We'll call it, yeah, why don't we call it the long number and the short the, number for the now? Long, and the long number. The long, num the long, long number. number. Yes, yes. Dr. Oh, G, sorry, which, which do you think is the long number? Because neither of ours are 12 digits on whether it's SMS or at Co. Sorry to drop that bomb on you, but um, yeah. I've permission. That, 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 is, that is the difference that the I think the SMS code they're all identical design. Yeah. Or or the, the, well no, the, actually actually, Mark, they're no, both not. supposedly meant to be identical designs. Uh, which is why this recording may very well be watching Jay's brain break in real time. <laughs> so um but, but Eona? certainly the the so we 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 use that that format, but Lancashire and um Northumberland used totally different ways and they got letters in their their um ATCO codes and certainly there are, there are authorities I think one of the Scottish ones have got quite short numbers you know, five, yeah. five well, that would be right because our um our ATCO codes would be um they can be as little as five digits mm -hmm. right just to help okay ACCO code is the one that starts with the three digits of your local authority. Yeah, SMS code yeah. is the other one. We'll just do it that way. I, there's no, no long or short. No, no, no the, the SMS code is the one which starts with three, dig, with three digits. I think they both do, actually. Yeah. Um, they both They both do. Yeah. But they're just different. They're, there would be different identifiers. Certainly okay. not. I'm just... I, We'll just the, do our best to figure out which one we're talking about at any point in time. The, the SMS must start with letters, surely, is it not? Uh, no. no. Um, I'm get, Lee, you'd think that, but apparently London use five digits and don't right. start with one, despite, and I know that I, I'm giving myself null poire for referring to the schema, but apparently in the schema, London were to, were to start with one, but they don't anymore. They start they're just a five digit code um which callum and i will probably have a quick discussion about at some point in time um yeah tim I you... well i was just about to add um so the history behind the um naptan code stroke sms code is that it was introduced because national travel line were doing a national text message service and their requirement was for it to be um, alpha characters to fit on a old school telephone keypad nicely. But they forgot that uh, Yorkshire was already running a real time system with an SMS system which used eight digits, um, which was based on the ATCO code. And so that's why there is a mix. And then London introduced theirs that was purely numeric and a few other local systems had purely numerics. So that's why it's a bit of a mess. That's actually, that's kind of useful. Thank you, Tim. Richard, thank you and for Richard's that. And Richard's right. So yeah, you used um, trapeze to do it and they followed on from um, using numeric. When I ask for a code, can you you will just describe to me which which of the codes that you think you're using there, and we will figure it out. And I will I will stop having a nervous breakdown in the corner. Um, QR codes use ACTO codes, brilliant, and or SMS codes, excellent, to identify the stop point and a URL for links to departure boards and other systems. And Strathclyde QR codes are not used alongside our NAPTAN dataset. Our paper timetable. Publicity now displays QR codes, but they take you to the operator website. Uh, yes, 
Lee, I, you think your mind is blown. I have, I'm, I'm going to have to go for a quiet lie down after this. They are generated by suppliers of websites and they are normally cons- consist of a base URL with a stop specific reference, normally ACTO code. And a parameter of the same URL is sometimes embedded with an NFC tag where an authority can use these. They change when a supplier chooses or the supplier for an area changes. Mostly links to real-time information for the stop, which is great. QR codes are not part of the NAP10 standard. We intend to use ours to hold a URL unique to the stop, which includes the stop's ACTO code. This will then link to an information page for the stop, including the journey planner, timetables, local amenities, etc. Fantastic. In London, so far, we've only run a trial to provide QR codes at, sele- at selected bus stops. Um, I know of a few other places that have QR codes. And what I, so what I'm trying to understand is where these different codes are used, because if we think people are using the ACTO code and they're using the NAPTAN code and we reuse a code or we throw away a code or we recycle a code, life is going to get a little bit mixed up and complicated more than it already is. Tackling the two other fields that are there. Now, these fields are in the data set. Um, if you don't know about them, that's completely okay. Uh, I've just been seeing them because I've been going through and I was just like trying to understand what these codes are. Uh, plate codes and clear down codes. QR codes are similar to NFC, it's just a mean of communicating a URL or link to a coded code. Exactly. What I'm trying to understand is which codes are used because if we recycle a code and a supplier doesn't know about it would that break some systems for them would that not how does this work just trying to understand where the complex points are I didn't realize it was in something as simple as the naming of codes right we've never heard of either of these that's completely fine Claredon was the identifier for the bus stop display on an analog radio network the bus would send a message on the network saying it had departed a stop the display would listen for messages with the clear down ID and reject all other messages. It was created by either an ally or a real-time information system suppliers. It was only relevant for stops within a given radio network's coverage. Um, as far as I understand, clear downs have died now. No one uses clear downs? There, there, there is one small real-time system out there still using clear down codes, but if they disappeared from that time, it wouldn't affect the operation of the system. Thank you, Tim. Um, I didn't, I, I, I was on the understanding that the system had, because it was an analog radio system, it was no longer being used. But if there's one supplier, that's, that's interesting to know. Plate often used to link to asset management systems. Some of the page and square of the stop in an A to Z map book. Um, Always seen these fields in the data, no idea what they are for so far, not needed them. In, Northumber- in Northumberland, uh, the plate code is the same as the ACTO code without the initial 3100, but I've never understood its purpose. There were no clear down codes in Northumberland. And don't think anyone uses clear down anymore. We now know that, that, that that's not correct. Right. Um, Let's take a deep breath and try and understand this from the customer's perspective and how we use them in in various places. Richard, sorry, I can see you're about to ask a question. Or not, I saw you come off mute. No worries. Um, So we all know that NAPTAN is the best little data, data set you've never heard of. We've got Beryl and Beverly. So this is Beryl. Beryl lives in Bristol. Beryl wants to see her friend Beverly. Beverly lives in Birmingham. The journey that we want to facilitate is Beryl getting from Bristol, using some public transport because she don't drive, to get herself to Beverly and Birmingham. Nice and simple. And yes, I realise putting in a metro is probably not quite valid for those two places, but it's the idea that we can use buses, trains, coaches, all sorts of things, countryside buses to get from one place to another. And Beryl is using a travel planner. Uh, We've somehow got an airport that's floated around somewhere quite different. So what I'm trying to understand is which codes we use when and only looking at buses and bus stops. Iona, Iona. 
Oh, sorry, no, I did. I just chuckled there because that's what we've just been talking about. But I don't have anything to to put forward. So. No worries. So, so I we've got my little map out that I made before. We've got local authorities who do proposal planning and provision of a bus stop, physical bus stop. You put it into the NAPTAN data set for a local authority and they're combined into a national data set. The bus operators use these data sets to make their routes, to plan what they're going to do and to staff up their buses and then on the bus systems have their next stop, the ticketing and the fare zone. And there's also the real time bus information with punctuality reporting and that information from especially from the scheduling and the routes goes into BODS and Trans Exchange. And then all of this information comes out at some point and is collated by a number of different things into consumer apps, which are run by the bus company, the local authority, Google, Apple, Traveline, and also your printed timetables. So Beryl catches the right bus at the right place at the right time for the right fare and NAPTAN is an enabler. On this diagram, it would be really great if you could put in where you think the different codes are most used. Just taking a second to say, at this point, I know people are using ACTO codes. At this point, I know somebody is using an SMS code or a NAPTAN code or a Cleardown code. I'm going to give you like two minutes because I think we've already gone through a lot of this and it's going to be an ad depends because it depends on the local authority, the bus operator, the bus service and a whole pile of other things. But I just kind of want you to grab a couple of stickies and just throw up there on there where you believe the different codes are being used. Tim. Um, when somebody's at a bus stop, where do you want that um, recorded? This point. Oh, actually, I forgot to give put Beryl at a bus stop. Just give me two seconds. I will just. Duplicate barrel and stick it at a bus stop. Just bear with me here a moment. I've got a bus stop. Where is my bus stop? My bus stops are over here. Sorry, you're just seeing the craziness of my world. I need to get to that center point as well. Just copy that. Come back over here. There is barrel at a bus stop as well. Is that OK? Set to back. So there we have Beryl physically at a bus stop. So so we can put that one there as well. I'll just put it about here. Cool. Thank you, Tim, for spotting that one bit that I'd forgotten. So I'm going to give you. Um, I'll give you five minutes. Um, if we if we finish, if we get through this earlier, but just put on there where you think those different codes are used. Five minutes later. OK, so we've got about a minute left. I can see lots of really good information being passed around. Um, and I will do my usual of just reading my way through it. Thank you for whoever provided the nice little handy cheat of just providing ACTO code. That was well useful and I should have done that. I will do that for the next one I'm running on Thursday. So for those who um, have bus operators that they're working with um, and uh, it would be really great if you let them know about the meeting on Thursday. I'm running the same thing, same question, pretty much the same questions with a focus on bus operators and just trying to see if the consumers have the same understanding or a different understanding to what we do, mostly as the data producers, um, around what these codes are and how they're used and how to use them. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sensing um, there might be given that there is some ambiguity and confusion around, or not confusion, there is some ambiguity around the codes and how they're used and how they're described, um, that may also translate down into the data consumers looking at the bus operators. So um, share out to your bus operators to come and talk to me. It's on Thursday at 10 o'clock. Right, let's dive into this now that beep's gone off. So... Uh, ACCO codes at the provision stage. ACCO codes, the one that look like this one. Thank you for that lovely person who did that one. The passenger never needs to know an ACTO code, but when they use a journey planner, it will use the ACTO code. And there's a lot of people saying yes to that. 
Passenger will likely use an SMS code if they look up a departure information on a sign or a mobile device. Excellent. And I'm assuming when you say that the SMS code that you type in and the QR code, are, you're kind of seeing them as almost the same thing of like they're just ways of getting to that same real time information about where what the next bus is and where it's going to go. Yes. Brilliant. I don't think passengers in Strathclyde will use SMS codes. They may look up the stop using Google Maps, but they won't be aware of the actual number reference. Excellent. Um, for So in BODs, in, for bus operators, their routes and their planning, they're using ACTO codes. And again, we've got that nice little explainer to make sure. We've got BODs using ACTO codes, Trans Exchange using ACTO codes. The next stop uses ACTO codes. Uh, QR codes, oops, just trying to ticketing, QR codes, but not stop linked. Ah, so is this the on the bus, some on the bus systems use Q, use QR codes for ticketing and fare, as well as the NFC systems? Yeah, that's right. Excellent, uh, because the bus needs to know where it is. Uh, fare zones tend to have different references at the moment. Future will be ACTO codes once, once BODS fares is widely adopted. Really good to know that echo, echo codes are coming uh, are, are becoming more used. Real-time bus information, echo codes, echo codes, echo codes. SMS codes are very useful before you leave home, also when approaching an interchange between two buses at the same part of the journey. Punctuality reporting uses echo codes. These all use echo. Bus companies use QR codes and printed timetables have echo and QR codes. Uh, SMS SNAPTAN code is often forms part of the bus stop flag. Previously, SMS codes, but not now. Potentially now QR codes, but it'd be useful if there was a standard QR code developed by Traveline. Really nice suggestion. And that's pretty much it. Are there any questions or confusions or bits that people don't quite understand on that? It's kind of making sense to me. Thank you. Uh, so now, very, very last bit we're going to do. We've got quite a bit of time, so we can spend a little bit more time diving into some of this if we want to. Now, this question came up, and unfortunately they're not here, so we um, will potentially do this exercise again with them. Um, the recycling codes. So what I want to understand is, which codes are unique? And if I want to manage, remove a stop, I need to put that into a box and fire it into the sun. And which codes are recyclable that if I want to manage, remove a stop, I put that into a recycle bin that somebody can pick up and reuse. So in terms of this, I want you to have a think about whether an ACCO code is unique or can be reused, whether a NAPTAN, the SMS code, so the the, actually, I will just run back over here and grab this very useful one here that I will stick besides ACCO codes so that we're very clear. That's an ACCO code. The SMS, this one is the other one. Your QR codes, whichever they refer to, and your other codes, your plate and your clear down if you use them at all, or anything else. Which ones you think are unique and which ones you think can be reused? So this is hopefully really short. So I'm going to give you like two minutes. Copy, duplicate, do whatever you want. Move it by move it by fighting over it. However we're going to do it, I, I need us to kind of say which ones go where. So put the ones that you think are unique over here. Put the ones you think can be re reused or recycled on this side. So just kind of splitting them apart, just ever so slightly, parting the waters. So we've got about two minutes left, um, which seems, and you all seem to be going about right. I'm... Um, I'm going to dive into, I can see a couple of questions that I need to ask. Really? Sorry, I just had a pigeon crash land 
on my windowsill. Not just land, but crash land on my windowsill. I'm just like, I feed birds. It's what I do to amuse myself. So um, simple, other simple question, um, and maybe this is something to pull out. How many, when I'm displaying stuff at a bus stop, how many people use ACTO codes or NAPTAN codes or some sort of code to display at the bus stop so that humans can see it? Do you have a labels on the bus stop, on your flags? Um, we use the ACCO codes on the flags. We don't, up until very recently, we weren't displaying the SMS code at all, but we've got a new system for doing our publicity, the bus timetable paper publicity, and that shows both. But it, but it doesn't actually advertise that you can use the SMS code um, how it was originally signed. As an SMS code, it's just yep. a second, it's just a second unique identifier. Yeah. Thank you for that, Iona. Um, Iona, sorry, I will eventually get the vowel sound at the start of your name <laughs> correct. Okay, so let me work through this, uh, starting off with the uniques. So ACCO, yes, ACCO SMS. Okay, NAPTAN SMS. Okay, in principle, it is dangerous to reuse an ACCO code. I'm going to ask what you mean by dangerous, because it might be bookmarked on a third-party system. Same goes for an SMS code. In addition, the ACTO code is the databases, it's a data set. Primary key, not reusing primary keys is one of the cornerstone of good data set designs. Absolutely, we do not want to be reusing our primary keys. I am, however, trying to understand, because we have two what appear to be primary keys. We no longer have it as a primary key, by the way, because it's not a um, SQL data set anymore. Um, but when you say dangerous, are you talking about dangerous in terms of a passenger would end up in the wrong place or dangerous in terms of data quality or data consistency? Well, the explanation that was always given to me was that um, you might have that SMS code or ATCO code bookmarked by somebody who's using a third party system. Um, you you reuse the code, but the bookmark doesn't change. It's now pointing to a different stop. And mm -hmm. if the person is using that to um, to plan a journey without actually potentially realizing that it's from a different stop, they're getting garbage results at the end of that. Excellent. Thank you, Roger. Um, quick question for you uh, to add a complexity. If we if we have our lovely manage remove stops and we've got the stops that have been put into some sort of defunct space since 2016, um, would it be okay to reuse any of those SMS codes? Uh, well, given how infrequently um, I've found bus operators and even software suppliers bother to update NAPTAN in their systems, um, I'd say it can be dangerous even over fairly long periods of time. When you're dealing with a member of the public who would not be aware that the code might change, it gets even worse. That's a really good point. Thank you. I'm just trying to just trying to tease this out and just understand. And I also understand why Transport for Greater Manchester um, may want to recycle codes. And then again, it comes down to how do they create the codes and, and looking at it that way. Right. Let me scroll up to this big one because this is really helping. We have found that reusing ACCO codes or SMS codes can result in an error in cases where the codes are already archived by NAPTAN, e.g. the City Council and County Council previously both used the same prefix of 260. City now uses 269. There are a number of former, former city ACTO codes in an archive state which we must avoid using. Okay. Um, for whoever this one is, when it comes to the managed removal, the ones that you need to avoid using we can put into the managed removal 
box to help you understand that you need to avoid using them. That might be an interesting side case that we hadn't really considered. Um, SMS is not a primary key as it is not mandatory. We are currently unable to create a new stop if it does not have an SMS code. Is that because your system tells you no? Is that a computer says no from your from the system that you're using? Exactly, yeah. And we are about to move, well, I say about to, in the works to get a new system where that might not be the case. But in our old um, system, we cannot, we can perhaps create an app to number and put all the information in, but it won't be mapped in our GIS system if it doesn't have an SMS code. Good to know. So there are some systems that are mandat mandating the field and some systems that might not. Um, echo code should never need to be reused as there are an infin infinite number of them and they are unique. Um, the number isn't quite infinite, but it is incredibly large, yes. Um, more than more than enough for us for stops to be everywhere. Never use an echo code, even when the stop is deleted, we need to use it for filling details of the stop, e.g. previous issues, land ownership, etc. QR is not a code as it stores information about other codes. We use QR codes on printed timetables and bus stops, but they encode the SMS or ACTO code generated in the UL. Absolutely, thank you for that. That's a really good point. It was more trying to um, tempt out how you were thinking about QR codes and would you ever want to reuse one? And now, because I see that you understand it's link off to the primary data sets, that, that makes a lot of sense. Just trying to tease it out. SMS could be reused as a unique identifier, so it may cause issues if reused. But we think plate and clear down, we can just do what we want. Sorry, somebody came off mute. Hi, I was going to add further on the question of the uh, reuse when we've got the archive um, ATCO codes and SMS codes. Um, we do have a list. We've actually got a list of those old codes, those old stops that um, use the 260 prefects that were in the city area. Um, so, I, so we don't use any of those. It's not an issue in the sense because we can just generate a new code. We just we create a new stop. What we can't do is create a new stop which happens to use either an existing archive ACO code or an SMS code. And uh, my understanding is that that list we have, you know, originated from from Naptan. Ian, if you could send us that list, that would be great because we can use it to double check some of the older versions that we've got, and we can make yeah. sure that we don't that we don't accidentally have some of these coming through. It also gives us another really good test list to work on when we do our managed removal service. So thank you. That would be great to get. Um, so because because we've been sprinting through this and we've got a, a few more minutes, I decided to ask one other question here. So I've just put it up here. You probably saw me doing it while you were working. Um, and the question is, if I could change one thing. Now, one thing, I want you to give me one thing, not a list of four things written as a long sentence, one thing that you could change about codes, what would it be? So take a minute. I'm only going to give you two minutes because it's a, it's a shortish kind of question. Um, but I just kind of want you to stop and think about if you could change one thing about all of these codes, all of this code stuff that we've talked about today, what would it be? Five minutes later. So we've got about 20 seconds left. Don't worry if you haven't put anything in. I get a, I, I get um. I have a suspicion that we will be spending quite some time on codes, just nutting through them, figuring out some of this into that finer detail. Um. I love that I didn't even need to call it out. Um, also, Finland were robbed. Finland were absolutely robbed. Um, not that I have anything sad to say about um, ABBA's 50th 
anniversary being hosted by Sweden. Um, now, very, very quickly, let's go through from the top, that they were standard across the UK. Do you mean that they were used in a standardised way across the UK so that everyone was using the same code in the same way and generating it in the same way so that they were unique and unique across the entirety of the UK? I'm assuming yes from that, that only one reference is required. Um, have Google understand that not all stops have an SMS code? That will be part of the conversation that I may that I will be having with them shortly. Some clear guidance on what the codes mean and their purpose could help inspire data providers to engage in the preparation and maintenance of good quality data. I think that's some of what I'm trying to do here, but thank you. I think building out that clear guidance will be part of what comes out of this. Um, and that will be part of maybe codes session three or four. Uh, have a web page that is clear on the definition of the purpose of each code, given people are not going to read a heavy schema guide document. Absolutely. And I see that the null no point for referring to a um, the schema guide. So thank you for that. Um, this has all been really good. It, I do have a lot to go away and consider and think about. This does help me understand the way that the data is showing up in the data set and understand a lot more about how you see these codes and talk about them and use them and generate them and work with them every day. So just in the last kind of, uh, we're probably going to finish five minutes early for once, um, just in the last little bit, I want to throw you up the feedback corner. Just have a think about this session help us make these sessions better for you. What gave you joy? What's been good and useful about this discussion? Do you want to get more deeper into codes? Do we need to continue? I think the QR code and the plate code and the clear down code are little red herrings and we're going to leave them off to one side, but really getting into the NAPTAN code and the ATCO codes, how they're generated, how you think about them, how they how they're used, how your systems use them, how downstream systems use them is going to be really, really important. Um, and so if you take a few minutes just to put in there what's worked, what's good and useful, what's frustrated you, what wasn't good or useful about this conversation, what's made you sad, what things are missing and what things that should be happening, especially in this conversation, but also across in the entirety of these wider NAPTAN conversations. Um, it's going to be really useful for me to know this um, and for Hannah and Haraj to know this because we can then go and have these discussions and build out some of these wider pieces of thinking. Um, and yeah, thank you everybody for your feedback and for your enthusiasm. I realise we have spent two hours discussing two data fields in great and enormous and complicated detail. And when people ask me what I do for a job, I'm trying to describe this as one of the hardest and most <laughs> insane things ever. Um, so, yeah, I just really wanted to thank you all for for coming along and, and partaking. And again, if you have bus operators, we really want to get a lot of bus operators in on Thursday morning in the other session, which is focused on bus operators to try and understand their view of the same pieces of data and how they see them and how they are using them. So that, that's my first request. And my second request is invite me to your meetings, invite me to your regional meetings, me, Hannah and Taraj. Um, we want to come along to these meetings and just make friends with you, understand how you're seeing the world, understand the things that are coming up for you, because we can then take that and have a think about how we can make NAPTAN more better, um, make this whole system smoother, make help make the data quality be seen as good as what it is, because there continues to be this narrative that NAPTAN data not be good. I don't believe that's true. I know that narrative has come through over a couple of years in different ways, but I don't believe that's true. I think you all do a great job 
getting the best data that you can in there. And I think some of it is just trying to help people understand what it is you've put in and how to use it and how to see it with the same way as you're seeing it, how you will see a physical bus stop and turn it into data. So yes, thank you very much for that. Um, and yeah, we've all got 15 minutes of our, well, I hate saying you've got 15 minutes of your life back um, because it makes me feel like I've bogarted your time or something. We, we're going to finish a few minutes early, which is a surprise um, or not really. Uh, yeah, it is actually a surprise. I usually don't. Um, so I've really appreciated all of your input and feedback. Um, get in contact with us. All of our email addresses are over there and the central email box as well. <laughs> so, Alex, were you actually in Liverpool at the time? Ah, amazing. Um, I'm friends with um, Corrine, who, who is the official photographer um, who did my headshot, which shows up. And it was brilliant fun watching her um, Instagram and everything. And I was in a room full of people. And the moment she appeared on screen at one point, the entire room just yelled green and a huge, joyful, huge, joyful burst um, of noise, uh, which was great fun. Um, yes. Oh, yes, I will do. Um, give me two seconds. I need to grab it from another screen, which hopefully you won't be able to see. Just let me jump on my Instagram. I think it's called Captured by Corrine, but just give me two seconds to find it. Uh, I, here we are. Um, and honestly, if you ever want uh, some amazingly uh, funky headshots, um, I would heartily recommend her. Um, I'm a, I'm also a photographer here at um, she we struggled to kind of have a chilled relaxed um, me sitting in front of the camera and um, it was amazing she she uh, she just got me talking photography and then got all all these amazing shots from just getting me to relax which was great so yes heartily recommend her as a as a photographer and as uh, if you want headshots or anything like that Graham I can see you typing it's OK, I'm probably going to I'm probably going to cut from about um, doing the feedback onwards out of the out of the recording if we need to. Thank you, Graham. Um, I really appreciated everyone's feedback today. Um, I am literally going to go away and just uh, try and um, try and think about how all of this fits together. A little bit. Um, there are some naming conventions that are not consistent, and just trying to really, really plan that out with Hannah and Haraj. Uh, 